Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here reviewing the LG G4. But before I start with that, a couple of things. First off, 55,000 subscribers. Thank you, you're all awesome. Next, if you haven't already subscribed, click the link on screen or below this video. Finally, I'm a control freak, so I wanna give you all the control that I wish I had all the time in every BTEC review. If you're watching this on a PC, a Mac, or a Windows-based tablet, click the sections to the right and you can jump straight to them. If you're on a phone, use the time codes provided. And if you haven't skipped everything I just said, now you know you can. And now onto the LG G4. The G3 was a revolution. A new design, a large display, and the first mainstream smartphone to introduce Quad HD to the masses. A year on, and we've quite clearly gone from revolution to evolution with the LG G4. Large display, same resolution. It's pretty easy to dismiss the LG G4 as an LG G3.5 of sorts, but that would be overlooking some hefty smatterings of difference here. The camera is much better, the screen's better quality too, and it comes in a unique leather flavour as well. Is it enough to warrant an upgrade from a G3? And more to the point, is it a great phone given all the great phones currently on the market right now? Well, design-wise, the shape is virtually identical to the G3. It's actually a bit bigger despite having the same size screen and battery capacity. The button configuration is the same too, making it ergonomic, very, very comfortable for the size, but nevertheless samey. So on the surface, it doesn't really look like LG's improved things in this department. If anything, the LG G4 feels like a bit of a step backwards. Of the plastic variants, that's definitely true. The diamond faux brushed metal finish looks well, pretty cheap to be honest, and the ceramic white one doesn't look much better. But the leather-backed G4 definitely does, especially in tan. So if you're like me, you'll probably pick up either a tan or a yellow leather-backed one. Only then will you feel that you'll have a flagship design phone with the LG G4. That might be an underwhelming start, especially the year Samsung upped its game design-wise, but we're not done yet. The G4 has a removable back cover. Pick up a plastic one, then get a leather back cover, couple of months down the line and you will be laughing. Under the hood, you can also swap out the battery and a micro SD card as well. So you're left with a choice to make, a worse looking, less cohesive device that's ultimately more flexible or a better looking unibody device that doesn't give you as many options. Now onto the screen and things are taking a turn for the better. The G3 screen had awesome resolution, but it wasn't the punchiest or brightest out there. The G4s improves on both of those. Getting onto specifics and it's a quantum IPS display with a pixel density of 538 pixels per inch. That's Quad HD resolution. This means it's sharper than almost every screen out there, save for the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. In addition, the larger size means it's really great for viewing content on. Viewing angles rock and whites are really well calibrated. Perfect for me, although they might be a little bit cool for some people's tastes. Like I said, it's also punchy too, with similar zinginess to the LTPS panels found in Huawei and Sony phones of late. Outdoor viewability is really good with this sunlight sensing mode like on the Galaxy S6, which makes everything really visible when you're out in sunshine. And ultimately, LG's made everything better here, which is great considering it wasn't even too bad to begin with on the LG G3. The used rint face on the G3 however was a pet hate of mine. It looked just fine, but oh my goodness, the lag drove me crazy. After a month with the phone, there was very little I wanted to do more than root it and install stock Android on there. A couple of weeks in and the LG G4 definitely feels better than the G3 UI wise. It has a newer processor and three gig of RAM across all its variants. Aesthetically, the UI looks flat, just like with its predecessor. In our previews, a lot of you guys did not like how it looked. Troy in particular, a very vocal commenter of ours, likened it to a wombat's turd. Yes, that's a direct quote. Now, Troy, I love your floral language, but I'm gonna have to disagree here. Square icons are trademark LG and it looks a damn sight better than the LG G2's candy flossy type themes. The interface is also customizable in all the right areas. You can remove the slightly annoying G screen 
screen, for example. This is an additional screen that sits to the left of your home screen with information about how many steps you've taken in the day, music controls and quick access, or not really that quick access, to your infrared remote for your TV. This could be handy for newbies, but for seasoned LG users, it'll be more of a hindrance and it may even slow the phone down a little bit. The home screens themselves can be populated by applications and widgets. These shortcuts can actually be customized with a picture or icon of your choosing, which is actually really handy and quite fun as well. The notifications tray is also far removed from stock Android 5.1, which is the OS that the G4 runs. Instead of the two tiered notifications tray, you've got some quick toggles which you can swipe through and you've also got a sticky volume and brightness control as well. I don't mind this too much to be honest as it's actually less confusing than having to pull down an additional tier. You can also customize the buttons at the base of the screen, enabling up to five and this is pretty awesome too. You can add a soft key for example to pull down the notifications, perfect for smaller hands and you can have quick access to Q memo which will screen grab whatever's going on on screen and then you can doodle all over it with your finger. Given that historically Q memo sort of felt like a poor man's S note. Now this integration is a little bit tighter. It just makes me actually use it, which is something I never really did before. Ultimately, I love stock Lollipop, but LG's UI isn't terrible. It's busy, but you can tidy it up. The problem is, it does still lag a little bit. Rarely, admittedly, but every now and then I'd get low memory warnings and I just will have to close all my applications. This immediately solved all the lag I faced, but on a phone in 2015, I'm getting issues I wasn't really getting on some other phones in 2014. And well, that's not great, is it? Overall though, the UI is definitely a step in the right direction when compared to the G3. But, and I never ever thought I'd say this, I definitely prefer Samsung's new touch widths on the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. One area that LG G4 is unanimously good though is its camera. In fact, this is my favorite smartphone camera out right now, largely thanks to the UI. There are three shooting modes, simple, automatic, and manual. The simple mode requires you to just touch the screen to take your picture. The automatic mode gives you a few options to tweak, but not that many. Both of these modes process images quite heavily. When you get really nice and close up on them, you start to see they look a bit blotchy, a little bit like the LG G3's pictures. But those two modes only scratch the surface. The manual mode is where it's at. In case you couldn't tell, I could not be happier that LG's included such a good manual mode on here. I was at a gig and I was able to ramp up the ISO to 2700 and take pictures that I never thought I'd be able to take on a smartphone that wasn't made by Nokia. The manual UI is the best you're gonna get in the Android camp. It isn't as intuitive as the Lumia Ring system, but it does have some awesome features like an on-screen spirit level and histogram. If you don't mind your pictures looking like a dog's dinner so you can make them look better in Photoshop, there's even raw shooting as well. Light trails, long exposure detail shots, up close, macro, whatever the scene, if you know what you're doing, the LG G4 has you covered. It really is isn't fair to say it's better than an iPhone 6, it's better than the Samsung Galaxy S6, just like it isn't fair to say it isn't. What is fair to say is that just like with the Lumia 930 and even the 808 PureView, when you get a decent sensor and pair it with manual controls and an intuitive user interface, you get a great enthusiast's camera. In automatic mode, it's good, definitely competitive with the best out there. In manual mode, it gives you the option to wipe the floor with every other camera phone out there that doesn't have manual mode. Now one thing I've avoided doing with regards to the camera is mentioning specs before I talk about the real nitty gritty and that's so you don't get bogged down in it but it's a 16 megapixel sensor with 6 axis OIS that's optical image stabilization and on top of that you get laser autofocus as well as a color temperature reader which ensures you get the best white balance possible. Indeed you get very good white balance. As far as video goes it shoots full HD video and 4k video as well. Now the full HD video is better than the 4k in terms of things like exposure compensation. What you do also have is audio zoom. So when you pinch in and zoom in on something when recording a video, it will try and isolate the sound produced by whatever you're zooming in on. It worked really well sometimes, other times it really annoyed me. What annoyed me more than anything is the fact I couldn't switch it off. So while LG's streamlined the user interface beautifully, that was a little bit of a disappointment. The full HD video looks good, but it isn't quite up there with the Lumia 930 in terms of quality. The OIS is a little bit more jerky or it's super smooth and then it 
jerks a bit and then it's, so it's not quite as sharp. Also again the sound isn't as good either. As for watching movies on the G4 it is heaps better than the Lumia 930 and most phones out there. It really benefits from that large 5.5 inch display. The brighter picture and more vibrant colors on the Quantum IPS panel really do help things massively. There are a fair few codecs on board and the native video player is a Q slide app and what that means is it can pop out into a floating window that you can make more or less transparent. If you don't mind foregoing that feature, you can install apps like MX Player for the more obscure codecs out there. And if you want to stream movies, this is Android. You've got Netflix, you've got BBC iPlayer here in the UK, Crunchyroll for any anime fans. If you're in the US, you've got Hulu. The list is endless. As for the loudspeaker, I probably wouldn't watch a movie using it and I definitely wouldn't listen to a lot of music on it either. It's one speaker and it's situated around the back. LG, throw us a freaking bone. Even a front facing mono speaker would have been a step in the right direction. Thankfully, the G4 isn't all bad for music, not by a long stretch. 32 gig internal memory paired with micro SD expandability means you've got the option of getting likely more tracks than you even own on here. The phone is also an awesome ebook reader. It's got a larger panel than most flagships. And like I said, it's really sharp and whites look really, really good. Running Android, you can go all your favorite favorite ebook apps like Kindle, Kobo, and of course, Google Play Books likely pre-installed. Gaming on the G4 has fallen victim to LG's decision to go with a Snapdragon 808 processor instead of a Snapdragon 810 six cores instead of eight and noticeably worse graphical performance. Urgh. But for most games, you really won't notice the difference. Well-optimized 3D games like the entire Gameloft catalog, as well as 2D games will all look sensational on this thing. But Dragon Quest VIII, for example, dropped a few frames and that's our general benchmark for pushing phones to their limits. Definitely more than on the HTC One M9 and the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. This isn't the end of the world by any means, but it does suggest that the LG G4 won't be quite as few proof for some other current flagships out there, at least when it comes to top end and slightly under optimized games. Which is a real shame because ergonomically the G4 is great. Soft plastic and leather back, smooth corners and sides. While it has a rear mounted speaker, sticking headphones in, still more comfortable to play games on than on a Samsung Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge for example. General performance is good on the G4, like I mentioned when I was talking about the user interface. Three gig of RAM paired with six core one quad core, one dual core processor handles that quad HD screen really well. And when things do slow down a bit, the fact LG's included the option to clear background processors so easily really does save the day. Connection wise, you're laughing. 3G, 4G, Wi Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and an infrared blaster to control your television. Another area LG and HTC both hold the highest accolade is when it comes to storage. 32 gig internal memory is standard and micro. SD expandability up to 128 gigabytes. Finally, onto battery, and LG made a bit of a song and dance about the removable 3000 milliamp cell in here. But the sad reality is, no flagship, including the G4, will last more than a day. Okay, maybe the Z3 will. The LG G4 does last longer than the Galaxy S6 and the Huawei P8 and the iPhone 6. It lasts a tiny bit longer, around the same as the HTC One M9 but it's noticeably worse than the aforementioned Xperia Z3 and the iPhone 6 Plus. In short, it gives you average battery life, which is hardly surprising given the above average screen size and resolution. It'll definitely last a working day, but it won't last a full day for power users unless you give it a really decent charge in the middle of it. What is good is that you can swap the battery out. So get a battery pack and you can swap out halfway through the day, you will have nothing to worry about. Just to clarify, while it's the same battery capacity as the G3, it's a different battery model. So your G3 battery won't fit inside your G4 and act as a spare. LG also scrapped wireless charging out of the box, which was included on the G3. And I'm a little bit gutted by that. The G4 also doesn't ship with a quick charge 2.0 adapter, even though it supports the standard. So if you charge with a regular charger, it'll take you about two hours. If you invest in a quick charge 2.0 charger from zero to full will take you about one hour. So that's the LG G4. In a nutshell, the design is the weakest of the current flagship lineup right now. The screen, however, is amongst the strongest. 
larger than the rest and sharper than most. The UI is competitive, even if it is marred by patchy performance here and there. It has my favorite stills camera on any smartphone, bar none. The rest, performance, connections, battery life, are all average in context of all the other flagships around. As such, this is a brilliant phone amongst other brilliant phones. If Samsung hadn't made the S6 or S6 Edge, it would have been an even better phone. You see, it's a tough sell for gamers who need pure performance thanks to that chipset. Anyone who wants premium design, even the leather version falls behind most of the competition. It is, however, a piece of cake to recommend for anyone who games casually and hoards a lot of media and will need all that storage on board and available by microSD card. And as for imaging buffs out there who want to use Android, this is a phone for you. Now, I'm an imaging buff, so I'll be using this as my main phone until LG asks for it back. I've already been using it for two full weeks, so if you've got any questions about the LG G4, make sure you fire them in the comments section below and I will absolutely do my best to answer. If you did like my review, then make sure that you click that like button and for more reviews akin to this one, subscribe to the channel. I've already said it, but subscribing is a massive, massive help to me. Thanks for watching, BTECT.